and welcome to Catalyst MLM. I'm Brian Switchko, and today on the show we have Scott Stratton. Scott is an expert in viral, social, and authentic marketing, named one of the top five social media influencers in the world by Forbes, featured on the Wall Street Journal, USA Today, CNN, Inc.com, and more, garnered uh, content of his clients more than 60 million views. Uh, he's a keynote speaker for companies like Pepsi, Adobe, Red Cross. He is the president of Unmarketing, author of three best-selling books, including the Unmarketing book, the Flip Book of Aws- Unawesome, which I actually didn't know about until today, uh, and QR codes kill kittens. And by the way, he's freaking hilarious. Thanks so much for being on. There's no pressure at all now. <laughs> I think you'll live up to the hype because. Uh, so I just we were just talking about it a little bit before, but came back from NMX where you did. Honestly, the best keynote presentation that I've ever seen, either been to or seen online. Um, And it was just engaging and enthralling, but also informative and insightful. Um, So, I mean, I guess the the, the starting question here is with with a hugely engaged audience of hundreds of thousands of people, and and not just like numbers, but actually engaged people. um, How did you get started? Well, when it, you know. On marketing itself took took place you know, over a decade ago. I, I just created because I was I had enough of of hypocritical marketing. It's really where it came from. It was, you know, you'd hate getting a cold call, but you would have to go and cold call for your business, and you'd think you were special, <laughs> uh, and and you were like above the rules. Like I literally started in, in a buddy's office, a sales guy, and we were talking about whatever guys talk about, which is nothing. And uh, the phone rings and somebody tries to sell him something and he berates the guy and hangs up the phone and we joke about it, how ridiculous it was. And then he literally says to me, I'm not making this up. He says, you gotta go now, dude. I gotta I got go make my calls for the day. I'm like, you just, you just ripped the guy a new one who did it to you. And he's yeah. like, no, but I have a product that people need. <laughs> that was his, that was his justification yeah. you know, to, to do it. And I said, there's gotta be a better way. And the more I researched, those type of things like cold calling and stuff, you know, door knock and cold calling, you know, then it became uh, unsolicited email and then we called it spam and then, you know, and then social, you know, today where we look at it and people hate doing it a lot of the times. And there's two groups of people, people who'd want a better way. And there's other people who I call evil who just want to automate and, and, and they don't care about any collateral damage that happens. They just sit there and just hit every person they can until somebody, you know, potentially signs up or buys from them. And I just said, I'm not, I think people buy from people they know, like, and trust. Yeah. And and that's what I think if you're going to, if you believe that yourself, then you've got to build those things up. You got to create yourself and put yourself in a position of trust and of, of any kind of, you know, especially a personality, which I think that differentiates you from, from everybody. And uh, that's, and I've been ranting uh, ever since about it. That's amazing. And it's a powerful start, too, because I think so many in, and so many people in multi-level marketing, anyone who's been in for any decent amount of time, they're like, oh, you know, I hate cold calling, but I have to do it. And the truth is, you don't. You know, right. that's it, it doesn't you know, it can it can create results. It can create sales sometimes, but they're never lasting. There's no right. there's no connection there. And I think the, the best thing is there's no relationship there. Right. So so what's um, how did you get to relationships? How did you get from that kind of, I guess, um, anger and kind of just frustration to relationships well i've never left anger it's always <laughs> going to be there <laughs> that's what drives me for this stuff but relationships I, i'd always said one of the first things i ever wrote that would went under the unmarketing banner was if you believe that business is built on relationships make building them your business mm. that was that was my banner like that was exactly what i said this is what i want to build a company around yeah. and it really started with you know uh, like networking events like it yeah. was a there wasn't necessarily social media. So we talked about things like message boards. Yeah. We talked about things like community. Uh, I was one of the original members of a community called Rise, which is R-Y-Z-E or Z-E, depending where you live, and uh, .com. And it was really the first business social media site before they had the term social media. It was about a decade ago. And yeah. it's exactly what social is today. You create a profile, it's like LinkedIn, but it was actually, it worked. Well, that, you know, it was and- like a real conversations and groups and we created a Toronto one. So everything was about networking and getting to know people and it's, it's never changed and social media just came in and gave it that, that virtual component of things. Yeah, yeah. And I always used to explain it as, um, is it to cl- I, every time I, when I did consulting, I'd walk into a room and be like, when was social media invented? And they're like, three years ago, five years ago. And I'm like, no, it was like 32,000 years ago when <laughs> someone had a really good day and they decided to put a, a, a visual representation of that on a wall. It was just an actual mm-hmm. wall in a cave mm-hmm. in France. Yeah. yeah. And, um, that's, that's, but that's how it works. And that's yeah. where 
even online, like, you know, us geeks online have been doing social for since we've been online, like the original bulletin board systems, message board systems. That's, we just have a, we just, in the past few years, we've come up with a term. We, I, you know, we called it talking, you know, we <laughs> called it chatting back then. We called it, and message boards still thrive. Yeah. And the problem is we took like the, the asset, the, the great parts of message boards, and then businesses came around, you know, and we tried to, and we screwed it up. Like, there's no way you can go to an old school message board that, that still greatly exists right. and go to any of them and go in there and act like some businesses do on Twitter yeah. or Facebook and expect to get away with it. You would last three seconds. Oh, yeah. You'd get removed. you get deleted. you because... get some really angry comments in the process. Right. Because com <laughs> community works as a community. Yep. We forget that because, and I wish we didn't call it social media. I yeah. hate, I've hated it since the dawn of the term. The term media makes people think it's push. Yeah. You think it's push messaging and the social part of it. I just wish it was called, I don't, I don't uh, you know, we call it virtual communities. We call it virtual networking. We call it something. But when the media term came in there, we're like, okay, businesses come on in and screw it up. Like, yeah. It was just like push, push, push. And it kills me. And, and you put, um, there was a screenshot of your iPhone earlier and it showed all the, the filters that you have, which, by the way, I'm copying all of those. Um, <laughs> and, and it's, you know, it's you filtering out all of the automated posts. I mean, you know, right. there's a lot of very well-known uh, services that post to social media and you're just removing all of that. And it's only a matter of time before everyone else learns to remove all the, the crap. And I mean, crap right. being defined as anything that they don't want to see. Right. So you have well, to cr create things that people want to see. But that's the thing is, is that Twitter has turned into this massive kind of syndication yeah. network that we just we just throw out content we sync and we press one button and we say schedule this tomorrow at two and go to all of our platforms at once and we don't even have to be social anymore that's the coolest part right we're like we don't have to be social to leverage social media and it hurts my soul and so what i did there is using an app tweetbot that's how i access twitter on my, my iphone and it allows you to mute posts by certain apps and sites and i just took them all out i took out buffer i took out um uh, uh foursquare uh, foursquare yeah. instagram facebook cross posts yep. uh, and uh, you know what you want to schedule you want to you want to uh buffer it, go yep. some, you know cool stuff cool companies great whatever you're i don't make the as much as i think i do i don't make the social media rules but we control well, the noise. But you do, though, because you create your own social media rules. Well, that's what I mean. We, we allow the noise. Yeah. So when somebody complains that there's too much noise on Twitter, it's self-created. Yeah. We follow those people. We allow that noise to come into our world. It's like, you know, it's like turning, it's like me turning on, um, playing Metallica, throwing on like Injustice for All and, and just blaring it in my office and saying it's too loud. <laughs> like, I, I played it so yeah. I'm the one that, that played the music and so what I realized instead of me complaining all the time which is some of us made a career out of this thing <laughs> I said you know what I'm going to start you know turning down the volume of certain music mm -hmm. and I turned off those automated now again you want to do that you do that great I, I'm now saying and I always said it's in the books as well I don't I think scheduling is and, and automation social media is like sending a mannequin to a networking event you know like you're you're there but you're not there yep. but for me i needed to, to control the volume right and so and i turned it down and now when i log in you know what i see i see tweets from people who are tweeting who are there yeah. who want to talk about stuff and that to me was the entire point of twitter from the get-go yeah and the entire point of social is actually to have conversations and that, that's and supposed to be the the common sense of it and then sadly it's it's not too common. Yeah. And I mean, going on the on the same metaphor there with music that you turned on and sang too loud. So let's flip that or at least flip the, the direction of it and talk about things that you do for for marketing your own business. So right. with multi-level marketers, again, people will, oh, I hate doing cold calls. It's the worst thing in the world. You know, all these people always yell at me. And it's like, okay, well, you're turning the volume up on that. You're deciding right. to do that. So turn it, turn it, stop, stop doing it. But don't, don't do stuff that doesn't come natural to you. That's to me was the biggest part. And, you know, for, for any business that when you start trying to do something that's against your grain, right. Yeah. And you, it's just an old, it's an old craft. It's an old woodworking, you know, thing. Go, you, you cut with the grain, right. It's, it's so much easier. You ever try to cut a piece of wood down against the grain? It's just, you rip your saw up almost. Right. And it's the same thing with marketing, right. You've got to go with what you're natural at because you'll be great at it. Now there's ways, you know, you can get better at things, but if you're, if, you, if it makes you sick, cold calling like literally i know people who've thrown up oh, yeah. before doing it like that's not that's not where you want to focus your talents yeah. and and i mean i want to kind of point out for a second is that 
saying, okay, if cold calling, I mean, I wouldn't recommend anyone do it, but uh, it doesn't feel right to people. So turn down the volume, right? So some people are out there, like, yes, someone told me to stop doing cold calling. I don't have to do it anymore. Sure. But with, with multi-level, as with any entrepreneurial venture, you have to do something. You know, right. if you if you say, well, well, that's difficult and that's hard and you don't do anything, you have to get out there. So so right. what do you do? I mean, I know that you do a lot right. of content and rants, but how do you help clients promote their businesses through content? Well, and that's the thing. It's just, it's <laughs> if you say your natural ability is laziness, it's not going to do much for you. No. <laughs> I have a Ph.D. in lazy, so I understand that. But. Uh, it's it's finding your strengths in what you do. It's not saying, well, I don't like work, so therefore I'm just going to be naturally allowed to come to me. We're not, nobody's sitting there with this law of attraction thing saying, well, the universe will just show up my doorstep with all the clients I need. The universe we, or Miss Universe? We miss, well, either one, <laughs> you know, depending on which one you vote. It's fine. As long as, long as they, they show up soon, we'll be yes. fine. But with the, the biggest part when it comes to content, marketing is, is people mistake what content to market. So it's, it's, it's not about uh, recirculating content necessarily. It's not, there's so many, there's too many blogs out there now and sites that all they do is repost current content from somewhere. It's almost like a reblogging. It's like a, a Tumblr type of move where your opinion is what makes your content valuable to me. Yeah. That's where I always people, because when you, when you give opinion, you create authority. When you create authority, you're viewed as an expert in something. So whatever that is, is an expert. People have a huge issue with the word expert, whether that means calling themselves that or the word itself. It's you're, All an expert means is you know more than the, the common person. Well, and the, the person something. that's listening, because I, I, right. I think it's a very relative term, too. And I think people actually, and it's, it's actually, I don't, I don't mind it all the time, but people don't want to label themselves as an expert. I'd rather people have a little bit hesitant than be, I'm a guru, an expert of this. A ninja. But, you're, yeah, in Ninja and everything, and Jedi, and I used, to, I used to be my Twitter profile was Jedi. Of, uh, of, Wait, of do you still Twitter. have that? Just Jedi? Just, just it's just on my desk. Yeah, it's 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 kind of a a, a lifetime thing. So you know, it's a Boba, if you can see the camera, I got Boba Fett right beside me as well here, and everybody else. So and beside behind me here, there's Han Solo, and way in the back there, you see it? He's in carbonite. It's a Han Solo <laughs> nice. carbonite statue Is right it, there. It's a mini. So, yeah, I don't. Uh, I'm not making it up when I say I'm 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 a, I'm a Jedi. So. <laughs> that is so awesome. yeah. yeah you're you're in uh you're in good company here so um when it comes to creating content as an expert though uh, it, you gotta look at it and say there's value to my opinion yeah and there's a value to my opinion on something and what what is my take on something nothing new you know will ever be said yep. really you know there's everything has been said since the first person that was my essay that thing. was my sat question uh when i took the sats was write an essay about there's not the term there's nothing new under the sun Right. I did not do well. <laughs> no, we're not. But that's the, that's the point. That reminds me of my favorite story, though, right? Where the guy was the final mark of the exam. The big chunk of it was to find what, you know, what is bravery. Oh, he yeah. The and exam blank and just said, this is bravery and handed it in. <laughs> no, that, that wasn't an exam. That was um, uh, an entry letter to Harvard. That's, that, was, that's that was how I heard the story. Was that It was like just in red crayon. He just wrote, this is bravery and got into Harvard. And I was just like so, slow clap. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. That's Citizen Kane level slow clap right there. Like that's that's epic. So when when you go back to you in creating content, is just you look at something and say, what do I have an opinion about uh, passionately? Mm -hmm. And that's really where um, we don't create false experts that way. We don't create just regurgitated SEO friendly content. What we do is create content that spreads. Yeah. Uh, we, I call it reactive content, which means people will see it and they'll, they'll, they'll something will will click with them, uh, good or bad. They'll yeah. react to it, and it's not reaction for the for for false or for fake sake. It's creating content that says, "Look, I think this." You know, I've gotten reaction for years out of me saying I don't think scheduling or automation has a place in social media, and people are like, "Well, it's not that black and white." Well, I'm saying if you're gray about everything, you'd be like, "Well, maybe this or maybe that," then nobody cares. Yeah, you have to stand for something and actually you stick you, to you it. You take a stand, and it's polarizing, but you can't you can't stand in the middle, right? right? If you if you stand on both sides of the fence, it just hurts. You know, if you're going to polarize, you understand you'll you'll upset some people, but you'll also attract some people, and that's the right. the best way. You can't get everybody to read your stuff. You can't get everybody to, to want to work with you, but the ones who do, you attract them stronger. And and I think going back to the guy that I guess made you start thinking, the guy that was like, oh, well, my, my stuff's different. Like when I cold call, it's different. 
And you talk about talking about what you're passionate about. Most people who join a company, it's based on emotion, right? They're, they're very passionate about the product. Plus, they also want the freedom. Right. Passionate is not like, this is the most amazing coaster in the world. It will hold your drink. You know, like it, it, it's a coaster. Like you can be passionate about preventing drink spillage. <laughs> it's a great it's, cause. It, it's, yeah. a, it's a coaster and uh, matches my desk, by the way. Um, and, uh, you know, so, so a lot of people are very passionate about their products. And, you know, let's say health, right? There's a lot of network marketing companies in that mm-hmm. industry. So they're passionate about health and helping yeah. people. Well, you know, it was used in a different example. I think it was like a, a landing page or SEO example. It's like health is, and fitness is not a market. Uh, people who like yoga is not a market. Women who like yoga is not a market. Pregnant women who like yoga who are between the ages of 32 and 42 who like pineapples, like that's a market because, right. because you are a pregnant woman between, not you, right. but th- th- our example. If, if, there's a, if there's revenue in it, I could be. <laughs> if you want me to be, I can work on that. So, so that's how... it, where you, you need also a, an, an, an audience that would can potentially relate to you. Yeah. But, but how do you take someone who sells the same product that all these other people sell? Like that's at its core, that's what it is. How do you take one of those people and help them to find the thing that they're passionate about that then eventually, by the sake of just being uh, interesting and building relationships, leads to a sale? Well, I think there's also, there's, there's different ways to do it. And one of the, if you want to go, uh, if you to use the term organic way of doing things too, is you can connect as a business owner to people. And that's how I started on Twitter. I didn't join Twitter to become a, an expert in social media. I didn't join Twitter to get a book deal or get speaking gigs. I joined Twitter to connect with other business owners yeah. just as a networking tool. I just always think no matter what, the more smart, intelligent, supportive people you know, the better your business and life is anyways. Yeah. So that's why I joined Twitter. I joined Twitter to have a water cooler, to have a place to, to, to bounce ideas and to, to learn from. And so... I didn't sell anything on Twitter for 10,000 tweets. You know, it's excessive, but I didn't sell anything. I just connected. And then when I had the network and I'd given my, well, I called it social currency to the, to the platform, I'd given and given and given. And then I announced, you know, I had a product or something, 10,000 tweets, and people were open to it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the difference. You get to know people. And then, you, let's say Facebook, and you start connecting with more and more people, especially in your area, especially, you know, uh, geographically, it's, it's a nice kind of measurable thing you can see. I can just start you know, getting known in my geographic area. Then you throw something out there saying, hey, by the way, the problem is we make that pitch too early. Yeah, yeah. We so make that pitch too early. Like we're like literally after the handshake, we make that pitch. When well, in reality, it's Handshake not. with the right hand, business card with the left. With, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And hey, just look and use my URL specifically and go and check it out. Like it's not the time. I don't know, like, and trust you. Like I actually now hate despise and want to flee from you. you know, it's just like the, the polar opposites of what you're supposed to do. So, and like for me, you know, if, if you do any research online, you'll know I'm a huge unfan of most things in direct selling and MLM. I'm a huge anti because of, uh, I'm just on the unethical side of things in the industry. I'm so against so much because I've, you know, I've had people get, you know, their, their lives have been in the wrong way and they've gone the wrong companies. They've gone the wrong people. They've been scammed. So I had a friend of mine on Facebook a month ago. I've known her for three years. And then she posted something about why she loves the product she sells. You know what I did? I clicked and I read the, about the product and I didn't, I am the last person on yeah. earth to do that but I got to know her so what she posted was no threat to me right was not weird or cheesy or skeezy and I am the I my my warning walls and signs are up the highest out of anybody and I'm like that's cool I'm glad she actually loves she loves the product she talks about why she loves it and all type of stuff and I didn't even get revolted at all which I usually would do because everybody else jumps first to do that you were and that's what I mean by connecting with people first regardless of what your business is yeah and you were you're interested in her so you're interested in what she was doing but that's it we listen and we care about people that we care about and that's uh you said something at nmx that really hit me is uh you're talking about qr codes which i'll well i guess now's a good time is um so in your book, I have your book right here because I wanted to use it as an example because this is the thing that I've explained to like three friends um, already and and very graphically too is uh, is this one which I'll I'll put it up um, on the screen so that people can see it but it's the one where there's a QR code that says uh, find us on Facebook and it's on a mall door, right? 
and and as as I imitating you explain to my friends, I'm like, so so you go up with your QR code scanner presumably to to scan this and, and like them on Facebook. Why? We don't know. And <laughs> and and the door opens and hit yeah. and outward and like hits your hand and you know there, there's no thought behind it. And the the thing that you said after that was every time that we we use a tool in the way that it's not meant to be used and we don't think about it, we hurt ourselves. Right. And actually also at NMX, I was talking to someone because most of the people there, you know, they get pitched by MLMers a lot because they have an audience and that's, you know, oh, Um, so someone was telling me that they met a guy really nice at a networking event, different event. And uh, they go, hey, let's go for breakfast. So they went for breakfast and uh, they ordered and the waitress like hadn't even turned around to walk away, reaches into his bag, grabs out a laptop, opens up, has a video already like open and starts playing the video at full volume in the restaurant. Just like you're watching this now. And and it, it hurts the industry because that that's that hurts everyone. And, and it's like, you know, we're talking marketers. I mean, MLMers, it, multi-level marketing, it's marketing. And yeah. if you punch people in the face that we create your distaste of the industry. It, it's, it's, it's like if I asked you to go for lunch and as soon as the second the waitress walked around, I brought her the book and a credit card machine. Like you just don't, you don't do that. You just Sweet. don't. It's like, it's, it's just, it's just human relations. Yeah. You don't make the ask like in a second. It's like going out on a date with somebody. Right? So that's, but that's what it is, right? Yeah. You're not even gonna, you're not even going to finish the meal first. Like you're not even going to, nobody likes that. Nobody likes to be. I know we just you know, ordered Scott, but would you like to come back to my place? <laughs> that's what I mean. I just, and if somebody does say yes, you got to wonder what, you know, <laughs> what, kind of pers- what kind of person. How, how many other people are they saying? Well, that's and that's uh, the Simon Sinek has a thing, great thing called uh, uh, "Start with Why" in his book, and he talks about how the the car industry and the insurance industry they they over incentivize so much that it became a virus in their industry, so that people now it's very common. You walk to a car dealership and you're like. Well, I'm not paying that price because no. I, I haggle. That's what we do. And that never used to be the case. And so it's just, you know, if you become they be, to the point where they don't, even now, they don't sell cars to the point where they sell, you know, inventory where then the manufacturer gives them a bonus at the end of the month where it's like fixed. Price. We've messed it up so much yeah. that it's been amazing to see what we, we don't even think how this is supposed to work. If you just sat on the other side of the table once. And you were that guy and like sat on the other side of the breakfast table once, you'd never do it. You'd never do it in a million years if you got it came at you. But we think again, it's back to that whole thing. It's this hypocritical thing of, well, I can do it because I have a great opportunity. When it's not the I don't want to hear anything about that until we get to know each other, right? Take it's not a race. I, I actually have this in, in your book, which is signed, which I love. Um, I, I have this as a, a reminder because it's something that I did a very, 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 very long time ago at the recommendation of someone else in the company. And now I just look at it and I'm like, never again. And what it is, is a $100 bill that you might leave in an ATM machine on the ground or somewhere. It's called a drop card. And then you open it up and you're like, I found a hundred dollar. And then you open it up and it's like, this is worth a lot more than a real hundred dollar bill. Earn income every time people blah, 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 you know, join my opportunity. And it's just like, it, it's painful. And littering. Um, and it's just so bad. And people do this all the time. And the one that I told you about this before that I purposely didn't tell you about is because um, I want to surprise you. I uh, went out for drinks with some friends in a bar and mm-hmm. then went into the bathroom in the bar, bathroom in a bar. People who usually go into a bathroom in a bar are not sober. And yeah. I'm, I'm in there and like I just come from a meeting. So I'm like, I walk in and I, I mean, this is local place. I've been in there. I don't know, countless times over the last years that I've lived here. And there's always been two bumper stickers on the toilet in this bathroom and right. one of them is faded off be- because of all the urine because it's a bathroom <laughs> and it was just like a white like sticker and someone yeah. wrote on there two words to describe their opportunity and it's a great company but this person i was just, i don't want to say it because like it's a good company but yeah. this person is i just want to slap them and i might because they're local <laughs> and and it says you know two words to describe their opportunity and then those same two words dot com because that's the name yeah. of the company and yeah. um and then their their URL which is two words and then they couldn't fit it presumably while they're on their knees in a bar bathroom writing this and then at <laughs> gmail.com and I'm just sitting there I'm like I have got to send this to Scott don't drop the phone in the toilet don't drop the <laughs> phone in the toilet like take a picture it, it's it's revolting but it's so I mean would you say that it's easy to do the opposite 
Well, but, but, but the thing is, though, that you have to go back into the mindset of why somebody would do that. And they'd say, well, I've got it's nothing to lose, right? Because it's not costing me anything. I'm not. It, it, it's, it's this whole thing of not understanding that it, not every, every moment, including peeing, is an opportunity necessarily to sell. And one of the things in the book is a urinal advertisement for a realtor. It's yep. in that, right? And it's just like, I don't know if that's what you want to be related to. And you're peeing I'd on their say, face, right? In that one? You, <laughs> it's a, we took somebody sent it to me i'm like perfect and somebody sent me that thing uh, the day before we had to get the book into the publisher i'm like oh this is the Thank greatest final picture ever yeah, imagine we, that conversation it's like hey i'd like to buy a house from you how'd you find me well i was peeing on your face I was on your face and i realized this is a guy i want to work with like that was it like i you, you just look at the facts, you know, 20 years ago, we got a certain amount of a few hundred advertising messages a day we we're exposed to. And now people say anywhere 9,000 to 12,000, depending on what you look at yeah. per day. Do you want to be part of the noise yeah. or do you want to be outside the noise? That's it. Yeah. Do you want to be content or something or business has known that I want to not only consume, I want to read, I want to get to know, yeah. but I want to tell other people about, or is it something that interrupts and I'm trying to avoid and you pick. And, and you, you can spend days in, in, in the bus advertising industry, thanks realtors for it. The urinal pee pad industry, thanks insurance salesmen for it. You know, that they can, the interrupting economy is alive and well for the people that sell the ads. Right. And, and, and you, you want to say, you know, where do I want to be positioned as? Yeah. And, and you say, you say advertising, but I think that it's, it, I mean, advertising is a message, but go up a notch and it, it you know, it's a message. Because right. it, it could be advertising, it could be sales in the sense of selling a product or service or yourself in a dating context, um, but also building relationships. And I know you have a lovely experience with Delta. Um, and can you can you tell the, the short version of that? Because I have a question about it. Yeah, well, it's the JFK and, and uh, the Delta hub and I was in line of security and the, 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 the flight attendants and pilots who are allowed to bypass all wines, people, and um, common sense and courtesy uh, kept bumping up against me until the last one did. And I turned to her and I just had enough. And I said, you know, not even excuse me. And she turns to me and she said, I, she insists they all said excuse me. And I'm like, nope, didn't hear anybody say it. And she looks at me and goes, well, then open your ears. And like, and I'm just like, what did you say? And she <laughs> runs away and I tweet because I'm yeah. a you know, social media diva and I tweet it and um, Delta replies back in three minutes and says, you know, I really with sincere apologies, you know, or we, we nobody should be treated that way. Please accept our sincere apologies and then really owned it real quick and solved the problem real quick. So it went from a lifetime grudge to uh, three minutes later, a tweet that made me feel happy again. And, right. You know, that was a real time type of social media type of thing. Yeah. And, and you said, and it was, it just struck me. It was when I was um, looking you up and kind of just getting some good questions as you said uh people want to be uh to recognize their concerns right this want to be acknowledged most yeah. of the time right which is the people when they complain on on social especially they're not always wanting what they are asking for they just want to be acknowledged that they've been hurt and, and, and people who big... say you know they get the response of like oh M mlm sucks and it's like oh no 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 it doesn't it's great and it, you're not acknowledging their concerns right right and that's where you're not you're not you're going into what you know where the objection all objections come from somewhere yeah Right. And you have to see where you want to be able to know, obviously, know that's the trick of, of sales, too. Right. You want to be able to know the objection and sometimes even, you know, bring the subject up before they say it, you know, right. with a way that overcomes the objection before they voice it. And, and that's actually, I think, what I did at NMX on accident, um, isn't it? It was actually in one of your talks. I asked a question and that time I did it on purpose, which is uh, I introduced myself and I said, Catalyst MLM, we are uh, a, a no pitch, just value resource community or resource community for, and I said it like really, I enunciated it really hard as like multi level marketers. And I don't know if you noticed it when I asked that, but like five people like, ah, and like looked over like, who the hell is this guy? And then I started talking, and they like realized like, oh, like he's not selling something or pitching something. Right. Legit question. Right. So I, I mean, but I, I enunciated it because I wanted that. I wanted to use that gut reaction in my question to be like. I, I get that. I know that it's an issue. Let's fix it. Right. Right. And, um, yeah, and that's, but that's what that's the way to do it. Where otherwise people would they would come up and they would say, um, "I work for a company. It's a it's a business opportunity." You know, they try to they just try to avoid 
yeah. the phrase, you know, probably avoid the, which makes it look like then you have something to hide. Well, and, and network marketing as a term was invented in like 1991 by some distributors who were like, well, everybody hates the term multi-level marketing. Let's call it network marketing. <laughs> yeah. And then someone just asked me like, well, I think I'm going to call it like um, tiered marketing. I'm, I'm just like, I just like wanted to read. No. And it, it, it doesn't, it's a symptom, right? You know, you solve, yeah. solve the, the disease. So, okay. so with Delta, that changed your core thinking about that company. Like it, it affected you. And mm -hmm. it, uh, would you say, I mean, I know that, you know, that's your job and, and well, that's what you do. Uh, it's not a job cause you love it. But, mm -hmm. uh, would you say that that's normal that, that people occasionally are just really, their lives are affected by an interaction with an ad? I, I yeah, well, uh, it's, you know, an ad wise isn't, too easy. There's some great advertising out there. We just saw the Super Bowl. There can be some real effective things out there. But um, I mean, an interaction with a company too. Well, we're interacting with a company can be real effective. I think when when they have that human touch to it, it really can affect you. I think once we because of what it does is personalize the brand. Yeah. And you realize when somebody individually, when she tweeted, her name was Laura, and when she tweeted from Delta, when she says, "I am truly sorry," yeah. um, I felt that she was sorry. That it was really. I'm like, wow, there's a person there. Right? When we have a faceless brand or a faceless company, it's easy to just kind of just do it away. I've, I've seen it when sometimes when people will try to rip me to shreds about something on a video or something, and I'll reply to their comment. And they're like, oh, I mean, uh, uh, got the back the backtrack hater, the, <laughs> the baiter. You know, they just come back and they start backtracking because they realize I'm a person and I'm human and I'm there. I'm not just kind of a closed video shot or something like that. So right. it, it, I think we can be affected by at least – that's where the engagement affects it. You know, we can get it statically from some ads, but we can get it much more so from an engaging side of things. So, I mean, for, for a single person who, I mean, let's, there, there's kind of ranges here, right? There's the person who, like yourself, has a blog, has an audience, you know, maybe they get further down the road and they have books and speakings, but let's go back and just say the, the distributor that just got started, who's, you know, learning the ropes and kind of trying to find their voice. What's the value of, I mean, there's so many people that aren't human, right? They just, they just, syndicate content they don't talk to anyone they're faceless what's the value in this person who just got started in being human and starting from the get-go being human yeah, well it, i always always say too is when when you are your authentic self you have no competition that you the only way you're going to differentiate yourself by people who are selling the same product or opportunity is you it's, it's not even that's not even a cheesy way of saying it. it's not like, it's not like we are the world let's hold hands type of thing this is literally that is your only you know, unique selling proposition. If we want to go old school, um, you know, USP acronym from from business school. That's your only thing you've got differently. Yeah. And that when you come out as yourself, when you come out as a person, that's your asset. That's that's the only reason why somebody would join your team. Yeah. Other than another one, right? You're the one that brings that the 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 the, the value that can be only changed. You're not going to change the product. You're not going to change a compensation plan. You're not going to change any of that. What you're going to do is what you bring. And when I connect with somebody, when I want to go into a business of something, I have to connect with that person. Yeah. Whether that means your personality, whether that means your belief system, whether that means your sport, favorite sports team, whatever that is, I got to connect on certain things more so than I will somebody right beside you. Right, right. And your, your friend, you connected on their passion for the product. Right. Have you ever in any small way connected with someone when they talk to you about an opportunity? No, you've no and and have there been? I, mean, I know that there have the the polar opposite. Yeah, where you've repelled and and wanted because to. Because again, they they did it too early. They just right. jumped in and said because I never asked for the opportunity. Yeah. Right? I never wanted the opportunity. I never uh, um, you just you just assumed that uh, I had somebody approach me a few years ago in a mall, um, which is. <laughs> Which is the, you say mall and the story instantly is like awesome. Yeah, it's in, it's in, and I think I put it in on marketing too. It's just you just a guy walked up to me and it was like one in the afternoon. It was like a used book sale in the middle of the mall. You know, they had just temporary things, and I'm there and I'm wandering around because you know what? I don't I don't work. I don't I just I I'm I have an awesome life and I don't work and I go and I do my keynotes and I write books and so I can walk around the mall at one you know in the afternoon. I'm not on my lunch break. And this guy thinks I am. And he walks up to me. He's like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, I'm Canadian. And even <laughs> in Canada, you don't wander up to somebody as a stranger and say, just how are you doing out of nowhere? It just does not happen. You know, people think in the States that Canada's like, we're not like that. You know, we're just, we're just, we're polite, but we're not creepy. And uh, he walks up to me. He's like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, 
And I know exactly what's happening. I yep. know exactly what he's doing. He's, he's pitching me his opportunities. He's like, how you doing? I'm like, fine. I'm like, hey, I'm Jeff. I'm like, okay, I'm sure you are. It's <laughs> like, are you living the life of your dreams? Oh, I'm good like, Adam. And I'm like, yep. And he just looks at me. What? What do you mean? I'm like, uh, I'm walking around a mall uh, at one o'clock in the afternoon because I don't have to work. Uh, and I'm not pitching people anything. And he just looks at me and he's just, and just walks away. <laughs> he's got nowhere to go. It's not in his script. Yeah. And I'm like, listen to me very carefully. To, to, I, I went back and I, had, I just hung out with a friend of mine later. I'm like, if, you, if your idea of success is approaching strangers in malls that use book sales, then success is a weird thing because it's not like you, you want to be what people want to emulate. Right? And that's not what it is. And um, and ever since then, I just almost look for the people. I you can I can just you can see it. You can see the people in the mall. You can see the people wandering around and wanting to do it. And, um, and especially been, if they have I, a clipboard, it makes it ten times. Oh, better. the clipboard's beautiful. The fake smile. The uh, it's just strangers don't approach strangers. It just doesn't happen. That way. You know, it just doesn't happen. And uh, and I know why. But, because but if you have a through, common already... interest, though, like I mean, right. I've I've made. I mean plenty of friends running getting coffee i mean yeah. i got i got i got work from someone um i did consulting work because uh, a year and a half prior i had done a three-point turn in his parking lot and as i was backing up i saw a bunch of mac computers and i was like i'm gonna park my car and go ask what they do because i love mac computers and then a year and a half later had a friend and a client yeah but that's but that's where if you walked in there and said hey if you want to make some money with those macs you know it just would uh it's, yeah. it's not gonna happen no and right. I, I think I walked in and I, I thought that they were a design agency. And, and I was just like really curious because I didn't know that there was a design agency here. And yeah. he's like, we're not. We're a software company. I was like, oh, cool. What'd you make? And I was just curious. And yeah. then I saw him in a bunch of networking groups, built a relationship, had no intention. I mean, I wasn't even doing that business a yeah. year and a half prior. Yeah. But that's the, that, there's the point, right? You actually, it's, the key here is that you need a, a genuine interest yeah. in other people. Or their and when you try to fake that, when you try to say, I have a genuine interest in you giving me business or joining my team or buying my product, that's not an interest in people. That's an interest in yourself. And the people who excel to me in almost any business have that genuine interest in others or their market or their customers because they want to get to know them and understand them before they try to sell to them. Yeah. And I think you hit the nail on the head earlier in terms of no one wants to go and pitch strangers in a mall. And so it's like if you're trying to recruit someone into an opportunity and they, they see you doing this thing that you're saying that they can do and you're like, well, I don't want to pitch strangers in a mall. You're creepy. I don't want to be creepy, you know? And, yeah. and if you build relationships and you have fun and you do things that you love and you, you get out there and you, you just offer value, people are like, that guy's really cool. I want to be like him. I'm like, I want to be on stage like Scott. Actually, speaking of which, um, uh, I forget his name, um, Rich, but, uh, who managed the NMAX. He, he's talked about how you and Gary, both the year prior, came up and said, I'm doing your next keynote. And so he said that, and I was like, I'm doing your next keynote. And then you did your keynote. And as I was walking out, I saw him and I was like, never mind. <laughs> I don't want to follow that. I don't want to follow that. I'm not going to do that. We're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> we'll just leave it there. But that's, but that's the point. It's like the guy walks up to me and says, are you living the life of your dreams? I'm looking at him like, are you? Like, yeah. is it, this is your dream? Like, is this your dream to to hit up people in malls and that, but that was it. I did a walked up from the year before. I'm like, I'm doing that next year where, you know, having, you have to have goals, but they also have to be, you know, sometimes they be um, realistic too. And I, I just thought, I said, uh, because I love it. And that's where I hope that comes up because that's my job, you know, and I hope that comes across as, as, as passionate as it feels when I'm up there, that this is what I'm meant to do. We're all meant to do something. And I'm just, I think I, I, I know, I know it can be contagious. Yep. You know, that passion is contagious. Yeah, and it hits you. It, it, it evokes that emotion. And I, I, you said it in the, it was way ago and it was in reference to the Delta thing. Um, but you said when you were all upset and, and you were like, you know, the person pushed past you and like, open your ears and you, do you know how important I think I am? And, and, it's, and it's true because everyone thinks that they're important, right? So you, yeah. have, to, you have to recognize that and not, yeah. you know, just treat everyone the same. Like everybody has that sense of importance, you know, I mean, obviously celebrities, you know, there's going to be the ones that are like, you know, over inflated or whatever in vain. Right. But, but the truth is, is everyone has that sense of importance about themselves. We want to, we all want to feel special. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it works. That's why loyalty programs work. That's why VIP type things work. We all want to feel like we're the only person in the world and that's, it's important.
That's an awesome message. And all right, so I got one question for you. Yeah. It's an action question. Um, something that you know people can can act on today to start moving towards this. So uh, take your time and think back. But what experience, insight, or the moment, or, or what moment um, helped you to realize that you have the ability to become a successful entrepreneur? I uh, was the, the the day that I uh, opened a comic book store in my basement, and I was uh, twelve years old, yeah. and uh, I sold one comic. I think I bought it, um, but I enjoyed creating it and structuring it so much and putting it all together that I realized that um, uh, you know it's something I want to do. But if you really want the behind the curtain, yeah. I'm just not a good employee. I'm just not a good worker for people. I just don't. <laughs> entrepreneur is Latin. For bad employee, I really think so, and I just, I, I realize that um, I, I don't take order. I lead. It's my job, and I just think I think that's born um, people. And um, I, I, every job I quit is <laughs> one step closer to being an entrepreneur. And I just, I think it's in you. I think the guy, you, you do two things when you see a lemonade stand. You buy lemonade or you think they're not selling it at a good high enough price. It's, it's really, that's your two reactions in life, right? That's your two reactions. You're an entrepreneur reaction or a consumer reaction. It's yeah. one of two. I love that. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing this. I'm going to have uh, links to uh, QR codes, Kill Kittens, as well as your other books below, as well as your NMX keynote, which honestly, I think, I, I rarely say this, but everyone should watch. Um, and, and thank you so much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. Hey, pleasure's been all mine. Thanks for having me, man. Oh, my God.